Hello everybody and welcome to another modeling video. Today I have something that is quite special and that is a ready to run brass locomotive for double O gauge. First things first, those three words, if you're from the United States, are three words that you'd probably never hear in a sentence together. Uh, so ready to run brass, first off, is really popular over here in the United States. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I don't see the hype behind it. Maybe this locomotive will change that, but we'll see. Um, so, before I reveal the model, I would like to point out that these things are extremely rare. And um, <laughs> I, I don't know how many were made before anyone goes and asks how many of these were made. I don't know. Uh, I believe these were made in the 1980s, maybe late 70s, probably early 90s, somewhere around there. And I know they retailed for 150 pounds. These days, <laughs> they retail for anywhere between 340 to 500. Uh, and there's one on eBay right now for 600, uh, around the 600 pound mark. Uh, so these things are extremely rare, like I said. And I'm very lucky to have gotten a pretty good deal on these, on this one in particular. Um, I got this from Clark's Railworks, which is uh, Ellis Clark's Trains. Um, it's their pre-owned section department thing. They, they're the same company, but uh, Ellis Clark's uh, Ellis Ellis uh, Ellis Clark's uh, Trains. They have like a pre-owned store, and they have some amazing, amazing bargains on there. Um, it's a it's a lot better than Hatton's pre-owned section, and it's miles better than eBay. In my opinion, I've gotten a lot of locomotives from Clark's Railworks, so I will I I will definitely put a link in the description box below, and I highly recommend you guys go check them out. So let's take a look at the special locomotive, shall we? As you can see. It is a great, great Western Railway, even though it says Railroad. Uh, it's a pannier tank, actually. It doesn't say it on the box, but I will tell you that that is what it is. It's a pannier tank, and it says it's the Arch Bar Cab version. So this is basically the 8750 pannier tank. They have made the 5700 and the 9700. The 9700, if you don't know what that is, the 9700 is basically a... 5700 with cutback tanks where the tanks are um, re reduced in length to where the smoke box starts uh, and then they extend downwards. So those were built for use on the metropolitan underground sections, I believe. Um, and I really want one of those. Those things are so unique. They're, in my opinion, they're really cool looking. So if, if I ever found uh, come across one of these and they're at a good price. I'm definitely buying one. As well as the 57XX, uh, just to replace the Bachmann ones, because as you will see, I think this is a lot better than the Bachmann, uh, the Bachmann 5700s. Uh, well, the Bachmann Panniers in general, except for the 94XX, which is alright. So, and this is actually made, if you're interested, this is made by uh, Sam, Sam Hongza, I think that's how you pronounce it. So it's a Korean company. Uh, as far as I know, they may they make a lot of uh, brass HO locomotives over here in the states. So, yeah. So let's just let's just get into it. I'm actually pretty excited. I have not looked at this box. I'm gonna be completely honest. I have not looked at this box. So I I do know what condition the locomotive will be in. Because of the uh, listing that was on L uh, not Ellis Clark's, uh, Clark's Railworks. So, as you can see, they they do this all the time. They give you like little cards and stuff. It does like tell you like what's wrong with it, if it's fine or not. So there you go. Highly recommend these guys, by the way. I <laughs> haven't said that enough. So we have this little detail pack. Which uh, consists of the, I'm guessing this is for the crank pins. And then I did spot something. These are sprung buffers because they don't 
come with buffers attached or couplings. So that's that. And then this other bag, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to ask one of my friends who you may or may not know. If you're from the US, uh, his name is uh, Treyman440, I think. Uh, highly recommend his channel, by the way. Go check him out. So, yeah, there it is. And it's it has this, like, plastic thingy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, like, really excited. So I'm actually going to try and get this out and not damage it. So we're going to put that there. And... Wow. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> that is very heavy. First off, I'm going to get rid of everything. Brass pannier. I never thought that would ever happen. So yeah, this thing is absolutely amazing. Just look at the detail on it. Well, obviously, I mean, it's brass. It's even got like cab detail and all, um, oh my God. Are you, are you fucking serious right now? Okay, um, it's got a sliding roof hatch. Okay, cool. Yeah, this thing is amazing. Look at it. Look at all the detail. You can clearly see the rivets. Yeah, that's why the buffers are in a detail pack, because, like I said, the buffer, it doesn't come with buffers or couplings, so that should be fine. Um, I use screw link couplings anyway. Um, I do like these wheels. Um, oh, and the, uh, chassis appears to be compensated. I suppose that's a good thing. So let's just turn it over. So yeah, there's the gearbox. It looks like it's driven on the front axle. I think the brake rigging is slightly bent, but that's not too much of a problem. And there's the screws. So it looks like one screw up here. And then two back here. Or maybe it's just these two. I don't know. I've never had a brass locomotive before. But I, I believe these three, maybe four, are to remove the base plate. So, yeah. Uh, it doesn't come with, like, a bunker modeled. It doesn't appear to, anyways. But that's okay. You can put real coal over that. Uh, well, I am anyway. So this is the side um, that I was very aware of when I saw the picture. It doesn't look too bad. I don't know what the stuff is. But, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the paint when the time comes to paint it. Because I am painting this, by the way. But I'm not going to do it right away. I'm going to do it much later. Yeah, this thing is amazing. I, I really love the detail on it. This is so much better than the Bachman Panniers. Um, like I said, I'm probably just... If I find a 5700, actually... Actually, if I find a 5700, I'm probably just going to replace that. Because uh, I do have a Bachman 5700. And I've had it for years. I've had it for at least half a decade. Um, and it's not one of like the old mainline ones or split chassis ones. It's actually one of the DCC ready ones. So yeah, I'm probably going to replace that with one of these so yeah um i really do like this i don't know about the bonnet the safety valve bonnet i don't know if i can unsolder that and then glue it back on um because i do want to have like a polished uh, brass safety valve bonnet on my pannier when i paint it i do like the whistles although they're i don't know if they're accurate or not they're probably not but, I mean, they look okay, I suppose. You do have cab detail. I think you briefly saw it. Let me just turn it around and try not to drop it. But, yeah, you can... Can you? Can you see that? Yeah, there is some cab detail in there. It's not a lot. But, I mean, that's okay, I suppose. Now, this handrail is, like, slightly droopy. As you can see, that's fine. Like I said, I really love the wheels. I really love the connecting rods, the coupling rods, I mean. Yeah. So, let's uh, let's take it on the track, uh, the little test track, and see how it performs, shall we? So there we have the Sam Hongza, I believe. I believe I'm still saying that wrong, but the, uh, yeah, the Sam Hongza 8750. 
uh, onto our little test track here. So I'm just gonna make turn the power on, make sure it's probably not in the right direction, but let's give it some juice, shall we? See how it performs. Oop, it's, it moved. Well, it, it works. Um, I'm not sure if the stuttering, I'm positive the stuttering is caused by my really ancient and dirty track that is in dire need of replacing, which has actually happened because I have recently purchased some Kato track but the controller, the transformer, I I really don't trust it. I don't like it at all. So yeah, I, I don't know what to do about that. So I'm probably gonna revert back to easy track, but I'm just gonna use the uh, nickel, the nickel silver easy track, because this is the steel alloy track. But anyways, it seems to be running really well. I know it keeps going in and out of shot. So I'll, I will put some running clips uh, towards the end. Um, let's see if we can make it crawl. Don't think it will. I'm not touching the controller. Boop. Boop. Yep. No, it, it, that's about all we're going to get from it. Um, I believe this has a can motor, and it's dead. Oh boy. Um, poosh. Seems to be crawling better in reverse. Oh, never mind. It died. But yeah, this is slow speed. Uh, like I was saying, I believe this has a can motor. I will have to take it apart to make sure. And by take it apart, I mean take the body, the top half off, and check inside. Yeah, that's, um, well, that was better, but still stopped. But yeah, I really like this thing. So I will show you what it looks like at 50%. That's not 50%. I'm just reversing it all the way back. So that's 50%. Uh, this doesn't have a flywheel, but I believe this is like your typical uh, brass ready to run locomotive uh, gearbox and motor. I know some brass locomotives have like open frame motors and I don't, I don't, I don't think those are very good. Oh, it died again. Oh boy. And boop. There we go. But yeah, I really do like this thing. Now, price. I haven't told you how much I paid for this yet. Okay, so I paid 140 pounds for this brand spanking new and never been run before. Which is a hell of a lot better than the 300, 400, 500, and 600 pounds that these things normally go for. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this thing. I love it to bits. I am going to paint it, but that will be much later in the year, probably even next year when I have gotten more accustomed to brass because I do plan on doing some brass locomotive kits in the future as well. So I'll probably be painting that alongside, uh, alongside my kit building. But yeah, um, I'm going to be painting it in Great Western Green. Obviously, that is the only proper color for a Great Western engine, um, is in green, where <laughs> when it's appropriate, anyways. Um, so this will be in Great Western Green. It will have the shirt button, which I'm really not a fan of. I really don't like the shirt button, but I'm only adding it because I want a little bit of variation with my panniers. So this will have the shirt button to be in Great Western Green, and, we'll, and it will have the 
number 3612, which is, uh, well, was one, uh, one of the preserved uh, 8750 panniers that was bought by the Severn Valley Railway, but unfortunately it was used as a spare locomotive for uh, uh, 5764, 5764, and um, 7714. So the frames of uh, 3612 were later scrapped. Because the Severn Valley at one point had six panniers. They had three uh, 5700s and then uh, three uh, 15XXs. And now we only have half that. So we have two um, 5700s and one 15XX. But anyway, uh, that will be enough for this video. I will post uh, running clips of this uh, more like closer up, more closer up running clips in um, once, once this, when I'm done, essentially, um, I'm just really taken aback by this locomotive. I am so impressed with this. I can see why people over here in the States model brass, um, RTR brass. It is absolutely amazing. Um, Sam Hongza, I believe they also did a 45 and a 4575 XX, um, small prairie. Uh, but those are even more rare than these panniers. So... Yeah, um, I'm not gonna get one of those because I I kind of I kind of like the Brooklyn one to be honest, and the chimney on the Sam Hongzhi one doesn't really look entirely right. Whereas this is miles better than the Brooklyn Pennier. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching me geek out about a brass locomotive. So um, I will see you guys in another video. Bye bye. Hello? Okay. Oh boy.